what I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of inspiredinsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. And today is no different. We have Matt Inglet of Tilted Pixel. I'm going to formally introduce Matt in a second, who is a longtime friend. And Matt, I always like to point out other episodes people should check out on the podcast. We were just talking about Wim Hof. Um, that was an amazing episode. Um, and I was studying his stuff for a long time and I had him on and uh, he's a character. So check that episode out. And there's some cool agencies, you know, on the agency topic. Um, I Jason Smith. Um, he talks about how he went from fighting gangs. He was an LAPD for many years to agency owner and a uh, big difference, right? Man? <laughs> that <laughs> that is huge. <laughs> He's got some crazy stories. I'll tell you that. And um, maybe they'll make him into a movie someday. Uh, Chris Clark uh, is the founder, uh, managing partner at Digital Ignite. And he talks about innovative ways to put butts in seats at minor league baseball games and much more. So just cool, creative ideas. I always you know, it gets the juices flowing. So check those out and many more. And this episode is brought to you by Rise25. At Rise25, we help people give to and connect to their Dream 100 relationships and partnerships. And we do that by helping you run your podcast. And, and Matt knows this about me. The number one thing in my life is relationships. I'm always looking at ways to give to my best relationships. I found no better way to do that than to have people on my podcast, tell people, share, have, share their knowledge, what they're doing, shout from the rooftops, what they're working on. And from that, other people learn what's going on. Matt is a big proponent of podcasts. He has a podcast as well. And we'll talk about that. But if you have questions, we've been doing this. John and I have been doing this for over a decade each. Um, so we, we know a little bit about it. So go to rise25.com, email us if you have any questions. We're happy to help. Today, Matt Inglet is the founder of Tilted Pixel, and it's an agency that focuses on membership-based websites, and they help businesses to grow through consulting, marketing, and web development. And Matt has been doing this for many years, over 15 years, even though he looks very young. He's been doing this for a long time, and he has many clients that have gone from making six, fig six figures to millions. So he knows a thing or two about how to make this business model successful. And in the process, he's reinvented his agency several times and uh, is, you know, in the next stage of his growth. So Matt, thanks for joining me. And um, people can check out uh, TiltedPixel.com uh, and also your podcast, right? Yeah. Well, a podcast coming up because the one that I was doing for three years, uh, that one I'm no longer doing. But Tilted Pixel is coming out with a podcast on awesome. membership sites at some point this year. And yes, if you go should to TiltedPixel.com and join the email list, and once that's ready, then you'll definitely get it. So tell people about uh, Tilted Pixel. I know, you know, we're going to talk about the next phase for you because, you know, I know that early on, you have a story of, you know, working 80 hours plus, um, trying to make ends meet. You know, we, we've all been there, you know overworked, underpaid, right? And you've created systems, you've created you know, things in your business to now you can get to the next level. But tell people right now about Tilted Pixel in its current state. Yeah, well, we help uh, owners of membership websites, as you so nicely pointed out in the introduction. And really, that is the business model that for reasons we could get into, uh, we ended up just doing really well with. So people that have online businesses that are specifically membership based, and that could be like selling access to information. We have a client that has a cool stock photo site that she sells uh, monthly access to anything that's sort of recurring payments. Mm -hmm. uh, we just are able to do a lot with to help those businesses grow. So we've had a lot of clients that started out somewhere in the low six figures, sometimes even less. And some of those now have seven figure business membership businesses. And we've been along for the ride with them. And along the way, we've been able to help them a lot. And we've also been able to see what works across a lot of different sites, which I feel has been our superpower. We don't have just one data point ever. We have a lot of data points and that helps us quickly see the patterns of, okay, this is an issue. This is working great. 
and we take those powers and we use them to help more and more of our clients grow. Yeah, and if people are watching the video, um, you can see on here, I, Matt has not seen these. I pulled up a couple websites because I figured it'd be really cool to have them do some breakdown of a couple websites. And so he has not looked at these ahead of time. So you'll see, I'm going to be sharing screen and I'm sharing screen, but you'll see those sites in a second where I'm going to pull them up. Matt's going to give his best practices and tips right on the fly with some of these sites. But I wanted to start off with, there was, Matt, um, a site, a gemology. Um, and talk a little bit about what, what are the things you did when you were helping this um, site in the gemology industry? Kind of a yes. random niche. Yeah, it is random. And that's honestly like part of what I really love about the work that we do is there, there are so many different niches out there and so many cool people just doing things that you when you wake up out of bed, you don't even think is going to be a website, uh, much less super successful and super interesting and so on. So we always get to learn about all of these different topics. And it never feels like the same old thing. So uh, we, in, in that particular website, I mean, we, we've done a lot. We have revamped uh, the whole members area and uh, did a lot of other things. But one of the things that I think is the coolest was just uh, getting a nice new email sequence in place. Uh, so when people, like lots of people were coming to the site and whenever people are coming to your site, one of the things that you want to be doing is trying to create a longer term relationship with them, which inevitably usually means trying to get their email address. That's usually the first step so that instead of them leaving the website and losing touch with you, they provide their email and you can continue to educate them, create value for them, and you can start building a relationship that's hopefully ultimately going to lead into a paying customer. And so they did have things like this in place, but none of it was quite following the sort of structures that we're used to and which we know work. So we are able to turn this around and build in the type of email sequence that really delivers value, first of all, and also gets people wanting to share their email address. So you never want a form on your website that just says, sign up for our newsletter. We've all done it, but it's not great because why, why do I need another newsletter in my inbox? I don't. The, I want less newsletters in my inbox. So you have to give people something very specific. Yeah. And so what's unique about us and our approach is we're serious about this. So we actually did a ton of audience research. Uh, we actually did uh, phone interviews. Uh, with existing customers, like we dug deep mm. and we figured out what are the top problems in that space? People, what are people coming to the site trying to solve? And we picked something that resonated really well with that audience. And we made that the offer. So if you put in your email address, we'll teach you all about this. And they started by getting this just amazing educational PDF that basically addressed that problem. And that was followed by, I don't know, 10 to 12 emails that just built on that topic, educated them, educated them about uh, that website and its offerings. And of course, ultimately uh, focused in on uh, promoting the membership and really connecting that membership as a way to learn even more on this topic. And it, it, it was very successful, which ultimately is the goal. So in the end, uh, now that this email sequence is there in live, it's basically an automated salesperson. And it's just continuously allowing more people to sign up, go through this educational process, and then ultimately join. And because we measure everything, we saw the boost in sales that that created. And we can track exactly what that looks like before and after the sequence. I love that because it's really instructive for any business. It doesn't matter if it's a membership site or whatever, you know, talking to the customers, figuring out the biggest pain points and creating a educational sequence around those pain points that eventually leads to the sale that's going to solve their biggest pain. So I love that because any business can employ that. And yeah. um, there was another one, oh man, what I love about all these sites and, and you're, this is kind of a, a superpower is like, helping people zero in on their niche, right? I mean, you know what your niche is. You could see it, it's clear in day. If you're looking at the, uh, you know, the, the screen share here, it, it's very clear what Matt does. It's not like 
sometimes I go to a website. I'm like, I don't even know what this company does. And yeah, you don't, you, jargon. You, yeah, you want to hit on what, what does this company do? And, and then gem out, like just the, the sites you work with are super niched, right? So the next one I want you to talk about is there's a stock photo site. And you, you were saying before we hit record about why it was so successful. One of the reasons why it was so successful. Yeah. And this, this is another one where we've done a lot of work together, but the bit that I'm really proud of is the focus on the membership experience itself. So this is literally a stock photo website where you can sign up for a membership and then get access to this awesome, super premium collection of stock photos that gets added to every week, along with all of this other amazing content. And it's very difficult to build that. Like it genuinely is. And even if you go to big stock photo sites, there's a lot that's not amazing about the user interface. Uh, so one of the things that we did, and I'm really proud of, is that we've taken, we've taken this sort of niche membership site and we built a stock photo experience that I really think rivals what you see out there, right? It's on par, it it loads quickly, which again, not all of them can say that. Uh, it's easy to search for photos, it's easy to filter things, and just a ton of work and effort went into the user experience. And that again, goes back to, you have to do the work. So we did the research, we looked at what works on stock sites, we looked at what doesn't, we collaborated closely with the clients, and we really figured out what is it that this site has to do in order to provide a really good experience. Um, so <laughs> I see you've got Shutterstock. I, I just, up, and we're examples. not talking about, <laughs> by the way, we're not talking about Shutterstock, but I just did a quick search if you're watching the video just for stock photos, just to see what comes up as far as, because you, you know, when you're comparing it, like the one you're working with is really niche. And this is obviously not niche. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you have any comments on, on Shutterstock uh, in general, but keep 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 talking. I just wanted to pull up. Yeah, that. yeah. I, I you know I, I don't want to. It's hard for me to comment on Shutterstock or some of these big ones without having their data. But it does strike me, for example, that if I go to their homepage, the top thing I don't see on it is any stock photos. I find that a little odd. Right. You have to um, almost scroll down to see it. Like the if you're looking at that is fun. It's kind of ironic, right? That at the top is just like text of the of the top searches yeah it doesn't give me a, a a flavor or sense of what is it that you're providing or why i should be excited it's mm. just browse royalty free stock photos yeah and so I'm maybe sorry, you put like a you're background business, but maybe you put a background <laughs> of like a bunch of stock photos in this banner or some, some way to display what they do I mean, that would be a starting point, but I yeah. dive deeper into it. Like mm -hmm. we like to go back to first principles. So I'm not as interested in what banner photo we use. I'm interested in, well, who's your audience in the first place, mm. right? And what is it that they're trying to do? And what is it that they're trying to solve? Which is going back to that email sequence we were talking about. It may sound like such simple advice. Oh, put up an email sequence, right? You've heard this stuff a thousand times before. The thing is, you have to actually go and you have to do it and you have to do it properly. And that always starts with research. So uh, there is probably a better solution to the Shutterstock website uh, than we see right now. But the thing that I'd be very curious about then is who are their primary customers mm. and what are they struggling with? I see they're trying to sell a membership. So what's in it for me? And what I see is if I knew nothing else about Shutterstock, I didn't know that they were a major player in the space, they would look like just yet another stock photo site to me. Whereas yeah. like our client, for example, they targets a very specific audience and it, it's very clear whether you're a fit or not very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, whereas here it's like, I could browse this site for stock photos or I could browse 10 other sites for stock photos all offering me royalty free stock photography. So again, I'm not I'm not trying to be harsh on these guys. Again, Shutterstock, you're awesome, but uh, you know, there's probably they have room a huge business, but here. yeah, there's always room for improvement. It's interesting because what you see here is top stock image searches. All right. Now mm -hmm. we're in January, we're past uh the holidays right now, but yeah, it does Christmas have tree. Christmas, <laughs> Christmas tree, Santa Claus, Hanukkah ornaments. So it's interesting that for some reason this is what's showing up in the prime real estate of this yeah. site. 
And it's so weird because if you think about the marketing cycle, people are searching for Christmas tree photos in November, right? Like you're doing your Christmas marketing, you know, October, November, (laughs) you know, trying to get that in as soon as Black Friday is done. Uh, So yeah, it's really weird that we're recording this in January and it's talking about Santa Claus and Christmas trees. So you were saying, so, but the, that stock photo site um, that you had worked with was, you were saying was super niche. Yeah, exactly. It's stock photos um, for a certain niche uh, targeting a certain type of female business owner. Uh, Like there's a certain aesthetic and there's a certain uh, imagery associated with that. And they just make the best possible like stock photos for that niche. It's super Mm -hmm. cool. And, you know, what I want to talk about just in generally, and then we'll, we'll do a kind of a site breakdown on some of these ones I pulled up here is just in generally some of the biggest mistakes people make with their membership sites. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, there's a lot. Uh, so I'll, I'll throw out uh, one that's very common and that's only trying a monthly pricing plan. Right. And the problem with monthly is we often see that that's not the optimal choice. There, there's always going to be exceptions. But what we've discovered is with monthly plans, it sounds like a good idea because people only have to commit like $9.99 or 20 bucks a month for something. Uh, so you hook them in with this really low price. But the problem is, is that the two things happen. One is you see a, a lot of churn on the monthly plan. Mm-hmm. Uh, like when we compare monthlies to quarterly to annual or any other billing period other than monthly, monthly hands down has way more churn. And I'm talking like twice as much churn. Um, so monthly people tend to churn out really quickly. And part of it, of course, is that you sort of have to earn their business every single month. Every single month, they have to reevaluate whether they're getting value from you or not. And so if they got amazing value from you in month one, like let's say $500 worth of value, you gave them tons of good information and tons of good things, but you only charged them $20. Well, they got the bargain of a lifetime. But now month two comes all around and they're getting a little less value, um, that little less information. You've helped them solve a lot of their problem. So now, even though they got $500 worth of value in month one for what you helped them with in month two, you have to earn their business all over again. They're not looking at month one, they're looking at what they're getting out of it now, and it's less. And then you go to month three, now they're getting even less, and next thing you know, they're canceling. Whereas if you make, say, an annual membership, um, and, and it's a good, valuable membership, that means the minimum price that they have to pay to get all of that value is a lot more fair to you. But the flip side of it is they're paying yearly, they're actually way more likely to use the site. Uh, because they've actually paid you more upfront, um, and therefore, counterintuitively, they're actually more likely to get all the value that you're creating and make use of it and actually be a committed member. So we found many times over going to an annual plan is one of the fastest way uh, to just make your site more profitable. Uh, and again, it's it's not just oh we're we're going to make it annual so people can cancel less often. It, it better aligns the value that they're getting with the billing structure. Yeah. So monthly versus, you know, and including an annual plan, what else, what other mistakes do people make? Yeah. Um, so we've, we've already talked about this a little bit, uh, but not, it's not being clear what it is that your membership is solving for people or solving something for people that isn't a recurring problem. That's a big one because not everything needs to be a membership site. And there was this wave of people uh, kind of going jumping on the membership trend and just basically converting courses into memberships. And if you're just giving people access to the same content month after month, you're not giving them anything new, uh, they're going to churn out really fast. And I think rightfully so right? Why do I need to keep paying you for the same thing over and over? That's why Netflix has such a big budget for producing content, right? They, they know that once you've seen the shows you want to see, if they give you nothing else, it doesn't matter how amazing those shows were that you watched, you're not going to keep paying them. So 
you really want to pick a problem where producing more content or some, giving them something else like a community actually makes sense. And it's not that you can solve their problem in three months and then you're hoping you're going to charge their credit card for the next two years. It really doesn't work that way. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Like yeah, there's the another guy I had on here and I'll let you do the next one. Um, Ross Gordon, he uh, ended up selling Craft Jack and then he started Mystery Tackle Box, which is a membership for uh, bass fishermen to sell, you know, subscription boxes. And I think they um, they rebranded it to um, like Bass.co or something like that, or like some, you know, the bass company, but uh, or Catch.co, one of them. But uh, anyways, so, you know, he he talked about actually customer acquisition because he's grown that to I think they're in you know um, huge retail stores even uh, so people can get their membership boxes and the membership site. So um, yeah, what else, what other mistakes do do be, I'm just going to go to Catch.co see what they have there and uh, see what you, see what you think. Um, but uh, let's see here. We have, uh, so they have mystery tackle box and you can get the subscription and they have different lure. I mean, I'm, I'm Matt, I would say I'm not much of a fisherman or anything like that, but, um, I think during COVID, I mean, it exploded all, even more because yeah. people could fish during COVID. What else do they can do? Golf and fish. So anyways, yeah, all they the have, socially isolated sports, <laughs> socially isolated. Exactly. Um, so they're doing some cool things with, with mystery tackle box. Um, what other mistakes do people make? Yeah. Um, why don't we say, uh, another great one to jump into is mm -hmm. just onboarding or lack thereof. There's a surprising amount of membership sites where people put a lot of time and effort into the sales piece, right? We want to get people um, subscribing to our membership and the membership site might be delivering on all of its promises, but we found that a lot of them are also very confusing. So you join in, you log in for the first time and just like, boom, you're hit with everything, right? There's like 12 different options that you can click on and there's like no clear place to go. Um, there might be some sort of wizard, like encouraging you to sign up and edit your profile and join the community. Uh, but it's all just like this whirlwind of do this, do this, do that. And what we found in practice is people get overwhelmed very, very quickly. And especially in that onboarding process where there's that giant learning curve, that's sort of one of your biggest challenges is yes, you've sold them on the membership, but you haven't actually earned that member yet. And if you don't earn that member, they're going to churn. And so one of the biggest dangers here is they get all excited about your sales copy. They go, they give you their money, they sign up. And then suddenly that like dopamine rush is satisfied because they've hit that buy button. They, they think, okay, this thing's going to solve all my problems. Then they realize, oh, there's work I have to do. I have to figure out this membership site. And then I have to actually commit to doing something in it, whatever's going to solve my problem, mm -hmm. whether it's like learning things or interacting with people. And there's usually like virtually zero effective handholding for that. And so they get overwhelmed. They put it in the to, to do later pile. And as soon as something goes in that pile, it's over. That's the to do never pile. Uh, we just don't call it that in our heads. Uh, and then inevitably, they might let you build them for like a three months while they, uh, you know, just have good intentions of jumping in. Eventually, they never get around to it and they finally cancel. And that's sort of a perfect example of an incomplete sale where you got some money out of them, but because you never took that effort to really bring them home, get them using your product, get them having success with it. Uh, you end up losing them. So that's something else that we do a lot of is looking at that entire experience and just trying to be a lot more creative with it and just a lot more, uh, just less overwhelming, right? And a lot more guided and make it obvious, like what should you do now? What sort of stuff doesn't matter right now, but you might want to get to later and just let them start feeling like they're starting to solve their problem in some sort of bite-sized increment that's actually achievable and not this daunting wall of stuff you have to do. 
Yeah, you know, Matt, when you were talking about that, it made me think, I don't know why my mind went to calendar software. Like when you subscribe and I was mm. pulled up Calendly and just to see what it looked like. Because when you you sign up for something like this, there's so much stuff. If there's not a clear onboarding and then it's just confusing, you have so, so much to set up, then you'll just be like, forget it. It's like, I'll just use my Google calendar and forget it. So it reminded me of, of this, like when you, if there's not a clear onboarding, it's, and you don't let walk people through those processes, they're not going to use it and they're not going to be successful. And they were going to churn off of it. And I had a interview with Gavin who ran acuity uh, scheduling, which then sold to, I think they sold to Squarespace and he was a master at making sure people were making the, that onboarding process. Like you were talking about, they're not doing those small things to be successful. They're just going to to churn off of the platform. So I love that advice on having a clear onboarding so that people have more success. Yeah, exactly. And that's way more important than get them using everything in the kitchen sink. It's just getting started and getting some wins. It's extra difficult with communities because you need people participating and discussing and people tend to come in at, come at it super excited. And then very quickly that excitement dies down. So there, there's a lot of challenges of onboarding and it, I think it's definitely something that the whole membership space doesn't pay nearly enough attention to it. Yeah, um, I want to go to breaking down some of these sites that I pulled up, but are there any others that we should mention first about big mistakes when people are uh, thinking about their, their membership? I mean, there's so many, right? Uh, like basically we, we could zoom out a little bit. And basically when we look at a website, we are looking for uh, the highest opportunity fixes or changes or implementation, the stuff where maybe your business is doing really well, but what's that big blind spot, that one weak spot that's in your way? Because usually this, the low hanging fruit, the big opportunities, the highest leverage things, those are the things that if you make that change, because you're doing so many other things right, that change is holding you back. Once you make it, that translates to big real money, right? It's not like, oh, I'll make a few thousand dollars more every year. It's like, oh, wow, my sales went up 30% because I was killing my sales and I didn't even know it. Right. And so the areas that we look at is is first and foremost, the entire like sales process, including all the all the things that I thought you, uh, just told you about looking at who the audience is and making sure that the messaging and offer match up against the problems that the audience has and that we're actually educating them on how we're solving them. And then once we get them over to the membership, then the next thing we look at is that member experience. And again, are we onboarding them? Are we delivering on our promises? Are we actually creating an experience that keeps them coming back? And then we look at things like uh, churn and retention and what's happening there. And usually there's things to solve. So Actually, as I'm explaining this, that I realized there's one more tip I can give you that's very uh, tangible. Uh, when people are canceling, that is probably your one and only chance to ask them why. It's very difficult to get any sort of response from someone after they've canceled. And we've tried it so many times. We run so many surveys for clients. And um, anytime we try to run a survey that includes churned people, past customers, they never respond. It, it just doesn't happen. Like you'll get a few responses, but it's not enough to do anything with. Whereas if, if right on the page where they have to hit that cancel button, you just have a text box that asks, why are you canceling? We read every, you know, please tell us we read every, uh, piece of feedback we receive. You're going to get like, you know, 50 times more replies then you will trying to email them later. And that's really helpful. That's something to pay really close attention to um, because that starts giving you an idea of what's happening, especially if you parse that feedback correctly. Love it. Um, okay, so I'm going to pull up some of these. You've not looked at these ahead of time. No. So um, I'm going to pull up the first one, uh, which is pencilkings.com. Uh, and just I'll, I'll kind of um, let you navigate me around, but just tell me what you're noticing or, or make comments on whatever you're seeing. Sure. Yeah. So we'll go through the homepage and whatever is involved in signing up. So right away, I mean, I'm first impressions is a good one. 
Uh, it seems at least from the top of the homepage, it's a well-designed site. And I love the headline at the top. It says, join thousands of artists already using Pencil Kings online, online art training to level up their art and careers. It's a little bit of a mouthful. <laughs> I, having tried to read that, I might simplify that a little bit, but it's good because right away, you know, it's for artists, right? You know, you're, you're not trying to use big complicated language to explain what you do like a lot of like corporate websites you, this is this is for artists trying to level up and since it's called pencil kings i assume it has something to do with drawings uh and then there's a video we don't have to watch it but there's a video that says here how katie improved her art with pencil kings okay so that's really cool and then there's a button join the community and find success as an artist so what's really good about this page is there's an offer before you've even really scrolled and it's a very clear offer. Now we're not gonna click that button yet. We're just gonna scroll down and we're gonna see what else is going on here. Oh boy, uh, th this is a really good one because it says learn from artists that have worked at the world's best studios. And they've got like the Marvel logo, the EA logo, DreamWorks, DC, Blue, I don't know what Blue Sky is, uh, but certainly the other four uh, I do recognize. Uh, so that's a lot of social proof. Then they have as seen uh, in Imagine FX magazine, uh, so that I assume is a big magazine for people in drawing. So that's really cool. Uh, and then we scroll down and I think, uh, okay, so here we have some tutorials. I think these are basically blog posts. So we've kind of scrolled down the offers and now I think this is basically the free content that they're providing. Um, it looks okay. I got to admit those thumbnails aren't grabbing me as much as I hoped. Uh, so that's something that makes me wonder, but it does seem that at least that they're, they're tackling some interesting problems, like how to draw a nose, uh, stop drawing. Here's how to start making art again. So it seems like they're, they do understand their client probably, and they are trying to speak to them. So that's not bad, but I don't know. The thumbnails weren't really grabbing me. Um, and it just, it makes me feel like there's probably, there's probably opportunities there. Um, okay. So yeah, they've got a podcast, they've got some testimonials. And then if we keep scrolling, they've got a button to join the community and find success as an artist. So, uh, I'm very curious what happens when I click that button. Cause now I think this is going to be the key point. Let's I have see. a question about that. Yeah. I'm going to click the button and we can go to, but I mean, at this point, would you put something like free? I don't know if it's free, if it's paid. Um, also, you mentioned, you know, don't say sign up for the newsletter, join the community, and find success as artists. Is that too broad? Like find success as artists? I don't know. I mean, I guess we'd have to talk to their, their customers and say, do I think, oh, I want to find, are they saying those phrases that's going to, to hook them in? Yeah, you know? no, that's a great question. That's actually what I'm trying to find out because I don't know where that button leads. All right, so I'm going to. I don't know if it's a free offer. I don't know if it's a paid offer. And that's what I'm curious about. So, it's a, so we've clicked on the next page. It says, become the artist you've always wanted to be. Okay, that's cool. And it's got a nice photo. The nice thing about a niche like drawing is they, they can make good art and make the website look pretty. So I, I always like that. All right. So now we scroll down. It says, learn from artists. Uh, we see, okay. Uh, <laughs> it might be losing me a little bit here. So we've gone from a lot of beauty and a lot of very simple messaging to the founder's story, which isn't bad on its own, but it's like suddenly the text just became a lot more plain. Um, it, I, it just felt kind of jarring. And just the way I look at it is I don't want to read this wall of text. Um, yeah. it, it's not really grabbing me at all. So that that's definitely a minus. I would want to make sure that even if someone just um, scrolls for your sales page and doesn't read everything, that there's enough headlines and yeah. enough direction that you get what's happening, even if you never get down into the nitty gritty. Right. Have some of these lines pop out, maybe some imagery potentially here. Um, Cause at this point I clicked and I go, I just want to join the community. Right. So yeah. um, I still am. Yeah, we still don't know what this is, right? Which is to me, like, again, a little bit confusing. And now it says, after years of struggling alone, I finally established myself as a successful artist working at AAA Games, surrounded by other amazing artists and was loving it. I would find a way to work that much higher. 
Because if that's the mm. outcome that the audience is seeking, yeah. I think you could have put that way higher. Put that like maybe at the before the founder story. Exactly. Yeah. And make me want to read that founder story because then I might read it, even if it is a wall of text, because yeah. now you're speaking to something I'm trying to do. But there is a disconnect because we're supposed to be joining this community. And now we're talking about like the starving artist struggle and trying to get into the AAA. All right. And finally, we're at introducing the offer, introducing Pencil Kings. Membership in the Pencil Kings community surrounds you with professional inspiring artists and gets you unlimited access to. So they have courses, live workshops, uh, they have a lot of stuff. And then they get into some of the features. So they're following, they're following a general sales page formula that works. Um, but I still feel a little uncomfortable from the homepage to the sales page. Um, I didn't realize I had to commit to buying something. And it does sound like that. I have to, I have to commit to a dollar trial for three days, then $2.99 a year. Um, so after having gone through all that, um, that's probably the thing I'd be most curious about is how well is this converting from people coming from the homepage, assuming that's even where they're coming from, uh, to this sales page? And are they signing up for that $1 trial? Uh, it's possible that they're absolutely killing it with it, but it's also possible that they're um, losing a lot of traffic to their site uh, because people have to whip out their credit card when they barely even know them. So I would definitely experiment at least and see what can we do where we get at their email address. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, because um, I guess there's two schools. They go right to the sales page with join the community you know, would they have a free offer, like get a template or something? I mean, they could offer something like get our face template that from, you know, from a Marvel comic and get an email, like an opt-in, like that would be an yeah. alternative, right? Yeah. There, there are a lot of ways to spin it, right? Including uh, you could join the email list. And then after they sign up for the email list on the next page, you could have some sort of limited time offer right? Known as a tripwire. So like that dollar trial could be there. Um, so that way uh, you've got their email address, but for the people that are interested in signing up for a trial right away, you've got them. You could even change that button on the homepage because that's what you were asking about. Does this make sense to say, join the community and find success as an artist? That's, that is kind of a weak call to action. Is that really what people are trying to achieve. It doesn't sound like it doesn't sound like it. Like it sounds like they're trying to become a better artist, not join the community. Right. And I'm kind of confused about where the community fits in versus where the courses fit in. Mm, that's a good um, point. Like what am I actually being sold here? And I think that's where it might start falling apart a little bit. And again, this is probably a very successful site. So right. we're not talking about a site that we're just like you know, kicking someone when they're down. I think they're doing pretty well. Um, this is more like if if we were looking at this and saying, okay, what are some possible opportunities to make this even better? There's an entire world of experimentation here where you there's very likely a better result hiding. Yeah. And I think with any of this, it's like, it's all a test, right? And they probably tested a bunch of things. And sometimes the ugliest sites we've seen perform the best. So you just never know without looking at the metrics. Um, so we're, again, just not, uh, you're not criticizing, but just looking at it from the outside to see what else, you know, what is uh, kind of a, just an observer coming in, uh, observing here. So it does say in some of the benefits here uh, or features classes, there is a, it looks like there's a community here. It looks like there's for every skill level, um, and then there is a, a trial. Um, but I am curious if it was tested to go um, to something specific they would opt in on and then like something like really pain point, let's say, you know, talk to five customers and what's the big pain point and get, give them that as like an opt-in and then redirect them to the community page or the template in the community cage um, to capture the, um, you know, capture the information. Right. Because yeah. how many people are going to go? I mean, it's in anything. I mean, the cart abandonment when someone, you know, in e commerce in general, put, someone puts in the shopping cart, there's a huge cart abandonment putting in the shopping cart, let alone hitting a page with the sales page, you know? 
Yeah, exactly. And that whipping out the credit card, maybe that's costing them sales. Maybe it's not, but I would want to see that hard data because yeah. yeah, like that's, that's the cool thing about this is you can try so many different funnels. I do, I do like how it's an annual membership. I think that again, speaking I knew you were to gonna say we were, that. yeah, speaking of what we we're saying, like they really promote it. They do have a monthly membership as well. Um, and actually if I were them, I would be considering making their yearly plan a bigger discount because they say you save 10% by signing up for yearly. Uh, I mean, one, I'm actually not sure if that math's correct, but um, I guess it would be. No, I think it's actually more than 10%. You it say, is more like, than 10%. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So fix the math. But uh, like really, uh, because annual plans are worth so much more than monthly, like I'd say discount it by 20 or even 30%. Right. Or you can even have a lot of fun and discount it by 40%, which just sounds like madness. But when you look into the data and you realize how much more an annual subscriber is worth than a monthly subscriber, you start to realize how much it makes sense to get people oh, totally. on an annual. I mean, if, if they did, again, they probably ran the metrics, but let's say they're um, on a monthly, right? They, if people turn after four months, right? So yep. that means it's $120. So anything more than $120 could make sense for them, right? If it's 150, exactly. 170, then why not just do that if you're going to convert more people to a year plan? Exactly. And that's basically like a no-brainer offer is what you're trying to create, right? Where you sort of get them in the door with that monthly price, but like the annual is so low that you'd almost have to be crazy not to do it, right? I've been sucked into that all the time. I'm like, yeah, wait, same. <laughs> oh, if, wait, the annual or, you know, or it's like the whole packet, like all the templates is, you know, a hundred, but one is 50. I'm like, what am I going to do? Right. They've, they've already suckered me into buying all of them. I'm like, yes. Okay. I'll just pay the hundred dollars. Exactly. The 50. Yeah. Because you'd feel terrible and like just spending <laughs> the $50 one and then thinking, oh, I could have gotten all this more for so much better. Like we all want a good deal. Right. So, uh, so I yeah, love that'd that. That'd be a big one for them. Yeah. So anyways, uh, this was interesting. Again, like we never know the metrics. We don't know the data. They may have tested that. And like, you guys are totally wrong. We've tested that. It doesn't work. But that, it's all a test. So mm -hmm. um, that's on Pencil Kings. And um, I pulled up the Herbal Academy. Um, talk, to, talk me through this. Yeah. And this is, again, I have not looked at this site before, so I'm kind of taking it in. So this appears to have something to do with uh, herbal medicine, I guess, or learning about herbs. That's actually kind of my first thought. Is this like medical herbs or is this something that goes in my like spaghetti? Uh, maybe people that are- <laughs> Or both. <into> <laughs> you put the medical herbs in the spaghetti. No. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Because I see, I don't know, like rosemary or something in the background. I'm not sure. Uh, but I, I, I think- It's somebody... legal in Canada, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it is. Uh, so uh, yeah, I- I think people interested in this probably would connect with it more and know right away what this is. So that's not necessarily a strike against them. Um, but yeah, I, I think this is more on the medical side. So pursue your herbal path by registering for a free program. The Becoming an Herbalist course is back. So this is interesting because they have a free offer right at the beginning of their mm -hmm. website. Uh, so that's probably very interesting and good. Uh, but they're a lot more vague about what you're going to get out of it, especially yeah. when you compare it to like Pencil Kings. Like, yes, we we pointed out issues where they could improve their offer, but I really don't know what pursuing my herbal path means. <laughs> I really don't know what this free program is, and I don't know what I'm going to get. It's healing your wife through herbs in the spaghetti. That's what it is. No. Um, yeah. <laughs> so well, we see this thing here, herb, herbarium. I'm not sure. Herbarium, yeah. I yeah. think so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. So now, now that's their membership. So want to study herbs at an affordable price at $45 a year, great addition, and you can visit it. So they're pitching the course. It says they, they pitch it as the best membership for herbalists. So, um, and they, then they do have some social proof. They show Al and us, or is it us weekly or us weekly? I think it's I, US, to, I don't know. I don't read. Those I need to brush up on but... my tabloids. Yeah. <laughs> flow. Uh, first for women, Willow and Sage. So like they're, they're showing social proof. That's awesome. 
but I still don't get like a really big promise off of this website. Mm. That's yeah. already missing for me. Yeah. It's talking like, it about could be herbs. like, let's say you want to, I mean, like, let's say you talk to like you going back to your advice is talk to five or 10 customers. Let's say they did this because they wanted to help heal their sick relative. Mm -hmm. Right. And so we don't know what the pain point is. Why are they, why do they want to be an herbalist? Right. I don't exactly. know. Exactly. And, and and who are they? Is this someone that wants to be an herbalist professionally? Is this someone dabbling for the first time? Uh, there's different segments of the market always. And you want to make sure people can identify with your messaging. And because we're being, being very vague on this website, I think we lose a lot of people who have a much stronger idea of what they want to learn and how and why. And none yeah. of us is communicating to us. Yeah. Like for me, like Matt, if they sold this to me, right. I love juicing. Okay. Mm. Um, and so if they said, you know, learn how to create the best immunity boosting, you know, juices you can through this course, you know, I'm, I may not even be their target market, but I'm just saying that speaks to me. I'd be like, Oh, cool. I'm going to sign up for this and see what I should be doing in my, Juicing and who knows? I don't know if that's why their their customers are buying the free offer, like you said, the the free mini course, or what is the pain point that these people are trying yeah. to solve? You know, right? And you mentioned immunity boosting, just in case people didn't quite catch that. That's so key. It's not just a juicing course; like it's targeting specifically juicing as an immunity boosting, thing. Yeah, especially during COVID or whatever, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Like, exactly. cause I see, you know, I do a lot of juicing with lemon, ginger, turmeric. And I just, that's what reminded me. Cause I see a lemon in the background of this picture, if you're watching it mm. and how do I, you know, help with my immunity, my family's immunity. And I see this big root. Cause I do, you know, the, the lemon, ginger, turmeric, lime juice, it's got, you know, a lot of ginger in it, ginger root, you know? So yeah, exactly. And that's what we're missing on this entire homepage. I don't see a single benefit of why I should learn herbs, what herbs will do for me. Uh, we're just missing that. And again, that doesn't mean the business isn't successful. They might be very successful. Um, but I, I suspect if they focus that offer in and make it more explicit, and like you said, like actually take the time to really speak to their customers, there's probably all sorts of opportunity to improve the conversion on that page and get more people wanting to look at those courses and wanting to join the free course. The fact that they have that free resource front and center, I do love that. That makes me super happy. Um, there is, there's a, <laughs> you're, you're scrolling and this, this homepage does go on for a very long time, <laughs> it seems, uh, which also kind of makes me wonder because now we're seeing other things like we're seeing a video, we're seeing a sale, we're seeing a lot of products. So now I'm actually getting a sense of overwhelm, uh, which is another thing I tackle where like, it's so tempting to put everything and anything in front of someone's face, hoping that something is going to be the right fit for them. But how often do we scroll to the bottom of a website? How often do we browse through like 20 different options and then pick one, right? If, you, if I give you 20 options that all sound like learning about herbs, there's a chance that your solution will be to buy none of them and find somewhere else. So there is a danger of giving people too much choice as well. Totally. I mean, I remember I interviewed Joe Sugarman who started Blue Blockers and he had a lot of direct response um, that he created. And I think one was with watches and he, he like offered six or seven different colors of watches. And then he just offered two and the one with two, obviously way out converted the, the number of options because people are overwhelmed with, the choices. I want to click on this to see what happens. Yeah. Your take on this. So we, in the top, like you said, it's good. They have a free program offer, right? And they have learned more there. You know, you were thinking maybe you include more details on why would I click on this? It gives someone more of a reason to do it. Um, but so here's what we get when we click on that, that free offer. Uh oh. <laughs> All right. So we get a page that looks like basically, uh, I guess, a store catalog. It's a catalog of courses. So we have a becoming an herbalist mini course, and it and and it's wonderful. It gives you this whole big description of what the course does. The copy says it's from zero dollars, so it's free. Uh, now it looks like I have to choose an option to sign up for it. I have to sign up the free course or course of printed planner. I assume the printed planner might cost me money. Maybe that's why it's from zero dollars. 
And then yeah, I'm it's actually $40 yeah, with the, $40 the, of the, the planner. Plan. So it's kind yeah. of, kind of an upsell, but okay. Let's say free course. And then let's click sign up now. Um, yeah, oh boy, I'm just, this I'm just looking going. at the description here for a second. Yeah. So this is huge. They basically built an entire sales page for a free course. Um, it's nice, but it, it could really be backfiring on them because uh, you don't need to whip out your credit card here. So if you spend too much time selling me on this thing, instead of just giving me the answer, the solution, um, you're just going to lose me, right? Like you have to provide enough info that people want to give you their email and, oh, and, and this is again, where we get into trouble. So Jeremy just clicked sign up now. <laughs> it basically, like, uh -oh. Yeah, we, we basically got to checkout page, even though it's a free sign up. So clearly they're leveraging their membership platform to do their free signups as well. So it's actually, I'm glad you brought this one up, Jeremy, because this is a great example of what not to do. Because um, if you want this free course, you have to fill out a pretty intense looking form. And it's a checkout form. So I'm and thinking have, like, why do I need my address for this free mini course? Right? Yeah, you don't need my address and you don't need, you know, whatever else it's collecting there. And you're making me come up with a username and password and all this stuff. All of this should be one field, my email address, and that's it. And you should be collecting that email as quickly as possible because it's in your best interest to get people into that store as quickly as possible. And I suspect this is a tech issue. Um, I suspect that this was probably a really quick way for them to get this up and running. Yeah. So we see that a lot, but in terms of conversions, it's probably hurting them a lot um, because you just have to go through so much to end up in this free course. Now you could argue, okay, maybe the people that join this course are they are shipping the course? No, I'm like, I'm no. like okay, because it says like due to increased demand. Due to COVID, shipping timeframes have been extended. So I imagine this is this is a digital course. It's going course. through the main checkout, and that's the oh, problem, gotcha. right? Gotcha. And and they do have that printed planner as an option. But what I would do is I would just get people to give me their email address, give them access to the course, ideally with as little fuss as possible. And then let's say they're making money on this printed planner. They want to send people that printed planner. You could do an upsell. So just like we were talking about much earlier in the conversation. You could have an offer as soon as they've entered in their email address. Yeah. You they fill it out, like, you hit checkout, and then it redirects them to the planner or wherever. Exactly. Yeah. It's commonly known as a tripwire offer, something really low cost. I mean, listen, sort of like the airlines do it all the time. They like redirect me to like three different. Do you want to upgrade <laughs> your seat? Do you want this? It's like, okay, no, no, no. But you know, even with GoDaddy, uh, cushions buying, on your seat, <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> so, um, I mean, lots of companies, I mean, mainstream and non-mainstream companies do it and they give you options to upgrade, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and it's smart because the, like to close the sale, don't make it too confusing, especially if you're doing something free and then worry about this other stuff. And yes, that makes your tech a little bit more complicated because you're not just going to be able to leverage your checkout system. Um, but it, it does hurt me thinking about all the leads we're losing uh, because we've put up so many different walls and barriers to get mm -hmm. people into this free course. And that mm -hmm. also means there's tons of people that even if they never become our customers, we've just stolen that value away from them, right? Because we could have been sharing all of this knowledge further and wider and having a bigger impact on people if we made it easier to access. So there's that as well. It's not always just the money. It's like, you just want to get this stuff out there as well. And this is a barrier to that. Yeah. I mean, I can see any time that you can reduce friction is good. I don't know if you have time, Matt, for the next one um, or not, yeah. but... Um, good for as long I, as you are. Okay. I have one more pulled up here, which is... Um, we're looking at the lighter side of real estate.com. Yeah. And <laughs> I mean, true to its name, I mean, I kind of chuckled as soon as I saw the website. Uh, it's got this like kind of fun, artsy, cartoony vibe. I got to say, I'm not the biggest fan of cartoons versus photos of real people, but I think they're, they're probably making it work. And, and it's like very artistically done. But what I really love about this is as soon as you open it, the very first headline, nice big headline, by the way, is become the most memorable agent in town. 
And then it says the average person knows 417 real estate agents will help you become the one they think of first. Although then it says made up fact, probably not far off. <laughs> so, so they're being kind of goofy about it. Right. And, and, and obviously, if they're calling themselves lighter side of real estate, then I get it. Uh, and it's got a nice get started button, just $39 a month, cancel anytime. So um, so far, so good, right? It's a paid offer, but real estate- They're probably hitting that- the pain point of their market. I mean, that's what it seems like. I'm not an agent, but I could see how that would be a pain point for sure. Yeah, I'm sure it's a huge pain point. Um, and definitely now we're talking, now we're really speaking to a business, right? Like if people sign up for this, they're going to hopefully get a return on investment. So you know, having a paid offer there, it's not the worst thing in the world. It probably does really well for them. And as you kind of scroll down, um, it, I guess, I think, explains the process of how you become an agent that stands out um, or how at least how it works with their platform. I think it's how it works with their platform. Yeah. So it's got a three-step process and then get started. Uh, so I think they're doing some sort of content marketing for agents or some sort of content marketing library for agents. Now, the problem for me is this this has gone so far in the direction of speaking to the client's problem that I actually don't know what I'm getting so far. And we're like one third of a way down the page. Um, So yeah, I I think I have to focus my brain if I want to understand what this does. So there's some tweaking to do there. Uh, they've helped thousands of agents from top brands. So that's great. Everything's really well professionally designed. Um, yeah, it's it's clearly a sales page though. And that's all it is. Uh, there's so far, we haven't really scrolled through anything that's not just them selling the membership. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, the flip so side like of it- content or something? Or what, what are you thinking? Uh, Let's say I'm not sold on giving you $39 a month after having been on your website for five minutes. Then you bounce. Then I bounce. So there's no there's no downsells to something else, right? Where like it's great to get that offer at the top and again become the most memorable agent in yeah. town. It's so good. I love that. Um, I don't love that if I'm not interested in that offer then my only option is to leave the site. There's yeah, nowhere to put in totally. my email. There's not real. I don't think we even saw any articles or anything that we can click on. Um, there's nothing that's going to educate me more on what this is. Um, there's no video even. A video would do really well here because there was that three-step oh, process, but like how many people are going to read it, right? And like understand it, right? Because people can read it, but doesn't mean they're going to understand it and follow what you're doing. And then how familiar are real estate agents with what you're providing? If this is going to be a new concept to this, to a lot of this audience, if you're making too many assumptions about what they know already, then you might be losing them. Because as I said, I actually don't know what you're selling. And I think to do that, I'd actually have to like pause and read this page. And then I'd probably be able to tell you. Yeah, it, it's either like it's something to do with real estate agents and content, but I don't a hundred percent know. Yeah. So again, there's there, there's room for improvement there. I think um, it's like a good point because like you could have a some kind of box and get started next to it and just say, you know, get our you know. I noticed below here there's like um, they have agent scripts, video training, vendor deals. I don't know what if they talk to their um, customers and like oh I just want this one agent script and they could offer something right next to it with uh, or opt in and get the number one phone script that agents across America, you know, some kind of opt in, right. Is what you're saying. Like give them an option, a free option. They can opt in for, get some value. And then now you have their email. You can form a relationship with them, something like that. Yeah, exactly. I I think that's just completely missing here. Um, You also want to look at how people are coming to their site. A lot of membership sites, uh, people are coming largely from online sources, right? Uh, Oftentimes it's Google uh, that's doing the heavy lifting of bringing in the traffic. So they probably have a lot of content published and people are probably landing on that content page uh, or one of their content pages first. So it does look like they, for example, have a blog. You've got that pulled up right now. Um, we could click on a specific blog article. I'm 
let's say the secret Kardashian formula every real estate agent needs to learn. All right, well, sure, that, that, let's uh, click that. Uh, I'm actually not not the biggest fan of their blog thumbnails. Um, I'm sure Kim, is, you know, grabs eyeballs, but like the thumbnails are kind of all over the place. Uh, but then we do have an article um, and you're scrolling through the article. I don't see too many images in the article itself. We finally came to one. And I also don't see, you're about halfway down the page. I don't see anything yet that I can click on to learn more, like put in my email right. address and like interact with you. So unless I get, yeah, unless I get through the, to the very bottom of this article, there's not a single real call to action to do something for free. And then what is at the bottom? Is there something for free? You, you click I don't something, think so. but I think it's paid. I think it is paid. There says click here to get started. And then there's also learn more. And I, yeah. th- I'm imagining I didn't click on the, um, I'm going to compare it to um, the get started here, the $39 to see if yeah. it's the same thing or not. No, this is a checkout. That's taking you to a checkout. So, so, so that's very quick. You go to the homepage and boom, boom. You, go to, you go to the checkout page. So if, if that homepage didn't share with me what I'm getting from this product, that's it. The checkout itself is really nice. Like everything about the site is aesthetically pleasing, uh, but it's just, it's missing some steps. And then here's what I clicked on the blog article. So this is a pop-up actually. Okay. So finally there's a way to enter your email address and get their entire collection of Facebook covers for free. So it looks like they're providing like media assets for Mm -hmm. real estate agents. I've picked that up like, uh, like stock photos, uh, memes, They, they specifically advertise like memes and like here it's Facebook banners and things like that. So that's cool. I could see real I estate. I out of that. But, but you're saying yeah. they could offer that option somewhere on the homepage. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Or even if you don't want to do it on your homepage, let's see most of your traffic comes in through your blog. Don't leave it as a pop-up, right? Like give, give me other ways that I can enter my email address, especially because that article is really long, uh, which isn't a bad thing. It's probably helping them rank, but we just we're probably losing traffic left and right. It wouldn't surprise me if they do well from referrals from real estate agents, right? One real estate agent tells another about yeah. this and they might be growing that way. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. But if you're coming to it cold turkey from, uh, not cold turkey, just cold from the Google, uh, you might just be like, okay, what is this? And you might leave. Yeah, Because it's very nicely designed, but the messaging is very confusing. Very cool. I love it. Matt, first of all, thank you. Uh, thanks for sharing yeah. your expertise, your stories. And I think, you know, no matter what business you're in, you know, uh, I think we can all use a refresh and thinking deeply about our customers and our website in the customer journey and everything like that. Um, so I just want to be the first one to thank you. I think everyone should check out tiltedpixel.com to learn more. Um, are there any other places online that we should point people towards? Yeah. uh, If you want to jump in and start learning how to improve your membership site, I'd suggest going to tiltedpixel.com slash course. Uh, There you will find uh, the opportunity to put in your email address and just get a wealth of information about uh, where you would want to start with improving your membership site. So it's things that you can implement yourself. And it's things that we also think about when someone hires us and says, okay, well, let's do analysis of our website and figure out where where the weak points are, where we're probably losing sales. How can we continue to grow these things? These are areas that we look at as well. We just look at them extremely extensively. And again, we we get a little obsessive about it. So we want to do surveys. We want to talk to customers. There's a lot we want to do. Um, but you can get the basic formula for free just by going to tiltedpixel.com slash course. Check it out. Check out more. Check out more episodes of inspiredinsider.com. And Matt, thank you so much. Thanks so much, Jeremy. It's been great fun being on your show. Always. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, nice like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. 